If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Curiosity is huge. On my apprenticeship, I wish I asked more questions. Yeah, it's about continuously learning. I want to know if you feel like you're successful. Success is if you're happy. As you know, it's the first of hopefully many. Oh, I can't bear to stand 20 minutes talking to Tom. That is Which probably, I know you did. It's probably, yeah, it's probably not going to go so well. Hey, I'm Tom Flood and I'm a co-founder of Engineers Insight. I'm here today at the Siemens facility in Congleton, sat here with Sarah Blacksmith. Um, Sarah, do you just want to introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. hi, yes, Sarah Blacksmith. Um, I work for Siemens Digital Industries and I look after the motion control business within our uh, company in the UK and Ireland. Fantastic. So thank you very much for no problem. this conversation. <laughs> As you know, it's the first of hopefully many. Um, don't know quite on... We don't quite know the format or how it'll look, but I think the, the premise is that we put some content out with leaders in the industry about how you got to your position, your background, um, and advice for maybe future engineers. So yeah. as though that's sort of where Engineers Insights naturally progress in. So the first question is, um, if you take us back to prior to Siemens. How many years ago? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, no comment. Um, <laughs> if you take us back prior to Siemens, where did you work? What did you do? Yeah, so when I was uh, before uni, um, if anyone remembers, you don't remember, K Shoes, um, back before Clark's uh, Shoes had K Shoes. I worked I worked in there. I've worked as a waitress in the tea rooms. Um, and then in between uni, well, before uni, and then in, in between terms when I was at university, I worked for... Um, what is now Bank of America, but basically credit cards um, and being in customer services. So I did a whole lot of like, can you just bear with me a moment while I find that out? <laughs> um, were there any moments in them jobs that really stand out to you? Uh, I mean, on the credit card, like, I mean, it was, it, it's interesting. It's like it, my first taste of selling stuff because at the time you had to sell like different options and things that you could try and do. And I was always a bit like, oh my God, I felt dead cringe doing it because I didn't really know what to say. And you had a script and it was like, yeah, someone's going to be able to listen to me reading this and it's going to sound hideous. But yeah, <laughs> hopefully I've got a bit better at trying to be a bit more natural. Since. How long did that last? I did it each each summer. So yeah, it'd be so, not bad then if you kept going back. No, well, yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah, it was customer. It was customer services for one bit, and then I was in like the activation team. So when you get a new credit card, you, you don't have to do this now because they've moved on. But um, you used to have to ring up, um, and they did that on purpose so that they could start selling people stuff. So of course, yeah, and then yeah, the customer services bit wasn't as as salesy as uh, as. as the, but yeah, I, I don't know if I'm cut out to be a full on sales. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Holiday was thinking, going, what? <laughs> <laughs> so how did you how did you transition from that into the manufacturing industry? Uh, so my dad's an engineer. And so I decided based on that, his influence, but also based on like, I was well into Formula One. So back when it was Damon Hill and Michael Schumacher. Um, and there's two that people would be like, you're either or there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was like, I was well into Formula One. So uh, I thought, yeah, I'd, I'd love to go work for a Formula One team. So I picked like physics, maths and French randomly at A-level. Um, and then, yeah, I went to Loughborough Uni uh, to do manufacturing engineering in the end because I actually, I didn't get the grades to do mechanical. So I don't think I was ever destined to be in an F1 team. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then, uh, yeah, so I did manufacturing engineering and then um, as part of that, I had to do a placement, like an industrial placement. So I applied to what was then Alston Power um, and did a year in industry. Um, so that was my first foray into an engineering straight manufacturing. Okay. And whilst at Alston, did you have mentors within Alston that were looking after you or did you have mentors outside of Alston that you looked um, up to? Well... So Alston was then that part of the business in Lincoln where I worked, where we make small gas turbines, was bought by Siemens. So um, it ended up being that I've worked for Siemens forever. So, uh, but it was different different parts of the business. Um, and yeah, so there was loads of, there was loads of people that I looked up to in the Lincoln business. So one lady who's um, called Claire Johnson, she was the first sort of chartered engineer that I met that was a female as well. And so it was like wow. 
because there weren't many females or there still aren't that many females but there definitely weren't that many females then so she really helped me um okay. like offered advice and she's one of her mates now so yeah um she was she was said good and I've had loads of people like who've helped me and mentored me throughout my career but that was probably the earliest uh effort and through that year do you remember any significant milestones anything that stands out that maybe was a bit of a turning point in your career or maybe you, you pivoted on what you wanted to do? Yeah, uh, I mean, I really enjoy working with people. So one of the things that I got thrown into was, and you won't remember, st Stickle Brick? No, no, okay. Um, so yeah, so we had this this game that was teaching people the principles of lean manufacturing um, and, and all about zero waste and just in time. And so we me and this other lady called Gemma Curtis, we were tasked with rolling this training out with the shop floor teams. So all the manufacturing teams. Um, and you can imagine some of them that didn't necessarily want to be there. They're like, what the hell are we doing? Taking a day out to play with stickle bricks. Um, but yeah, that was, that was ace. And I loved like meeting different people. Um, doing that sort of training was just a really nice way to learn the business because you learn about the people um, all the way through all the manufacturing groups. Um, so I really enjoyed doing that. It was, uh, it just made me think that I actually, yeah, I really want to work with, work with people in people management and stuff that, that was sort of where I, uh, I thought, yeah, that's for me, not necessarily like hardcore engineering because yeah, yeah. I probably okay. wasn't as good at it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that year goes by, do you go back to university or are you then part of the Siemens team? Yeah, so I got sponsored when I went back to uni on the graduate scheme. Um, so I went back for a year to finish off the bachelor's that I was doing and then came back as a as a graduate, but I didn't end up with the graduate scheme. So I did like about three months on the graduate, well, not even that probably, a couple of months on the graduate scheme. And then there was an opportunity to, to do like a, what they called a lean implementer role. So it was working in the assembly and test area, um, purely doing... Um, looking at where we could reduce waste, training people, et cetera. And so I applied for that and I got that. And then, um, yeah, went on for that. Did a couple of years doing that. And then um, people manager role came up in production um, called cell manager back then. Um, so, yeah, I ended up then about another six to eight years in looking after um, production management. Yeah. Okay. And that was the role before the role you're in now? That was your previous um, role? Yeah, there was like an interim where I did a couple of years as a manufacturing manager, so looking after a group of, of cell leaders. But um, So yeah, I got a really good grounding in um, working with loads of... I worked, I rotated through lots of different departments um, and then got the chance obviously looking after, you know, taking a little st step up, I guess, but look, being responsible for the delivery of um, a number of components into the assembly area. So. Great. Uh, and then I moved here <laughs> to yeah. Congleton. <laughs> <laughs> so looking back across them years, are there any hurdles or challenges that you remember that have stuck with you? Um, I think one of the things when I wanted to move over to the Northwest, like um, I was really torn um, about how to do, to do it because I wanted to move back over with my family and that. I wanted to stay with Siemens, but I couldn't see how that was going to work. So I actually applied and got a different job with um, and handed my notice in, actually, um, and was going to go work for a company in Hollywell, which is just down the road from Chester, where I live. And uh, yeah, handed my notice in. And actually, it was a guy um, called Paul Burt who works, who looks after um, the HR sort of team in, in smart infrastructure for Siemens that actually pointed out to me that there was a role, a vacancy in Congleton for a, effectively what was a production manager. Um, and so, yeah, I was like, but yeah, when I remember handing my notice in for, for C, and I was like, you know, I mean, lots of people change job lots of times, like, that's not me. Like, I, had to, <laughs> I haven't done that. And so I was like really torn about what to do. And then I ended up actually getting, I applied for the role in Congleton and then, yeah, moved over here in 2012, so. Okay. Yeah. So that was, uh, it was huge. I know, like, again, people move jobs all the time, yeah. don't they? Which is fantastic. It's just that, yeah, I stayed in Lincoln for about 10 years. I knew it all inside out. And then you come to a completely different business, albeit yeah. still under the Siemens umbrella. And then you're like, 
holy crap, I don't know anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> So sticking on that, that theme then, do you have tips for other people in similar situations? Did, did you come up with some way to remedy that? Uh, I think one of the, when I when I moved over here, the, the, the guy called Chris Rollins was my boss at the time, and he said, "It doesn't matter that it's different products. It doesn't matter. You know, it's all about it's all about the people. It's all about safety, quality, cost, and delivery. So in in manufacturing, that's what it's all about: the people foremost, and then those other things. So he says it doesn't matter what you're making. Like focus on those things, and then you'll be doing the right thing. So uh, yeah, just yeah, don't don't panic." manner like <laughs> don't panic like because i remember i actually I, I remember coming home one day and i'd only been doing it like a couple of weeks i'd moved here and i like started crying so i was like oh my god i don't know what i've done you know because there's so much new yeah. and you just yeah it's i mean i don't like siemens go talk a lot about this gross mindset and that wasn't really a thing as in it wasn't an expression then um but yeah it's trying to think of it as an opportunity to get out of your comfort zone. And I was saying when I moved into this role that I'm in now, which I've been in for a year, I was like, oh yeah, move out of your comfort zone. It'll be great. Like, yeah, just let's do it. And then you can do it and you're like, oh, sweet Lord, what have I done? Yeah. Like, I don't know anything. <laughs> so yeah, it's like embrace it as an opportunity to learn, but that's totally easier said than done. Yeah, exactly. It takes a certain character to be able to yeah. to take on them. Well, look at you doing what, you know, starting a, a company on your own. You. No, but it is though, isn't it? It's, you know, it takes bravery to change and do something different and yeah. be open to learning new things and meeting a whole new group of people. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, looking at my changes uh, for my family and, and stuff like that to go from a, very good job to yeah. no income. Um, but yeah, I've always had that in the back of my mind that actually I'm extending my network. Yeah. I'm working with great people like yourself, big, huge brands like Siemens or SMT, whoever you yeah, pick out yeah. of that hat. Um, so even with them challenges, I've always faced them head on thinking that something better comes from it. Yeah, another door opens. That's, That's cheesy, exactly. isn't it? But like... yeah. It is, it's totally true, isn't it? You wouldn't have met half the people no. probably that you've no. met through uh, and learn about all the different mechanisms, I guess, that there are for funding of startups and what yep. support there is available and what more we need to do in the country to support UK manufacturing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Probably got way more insight now. It, than... it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's as if you've read the questions because okay, the, yeah. next, <laughs> the next part of our questions links to that because, you know, we... We set out to build this this mobile app for industry and connect manufacturers like yourselves to yeah. engineers and vice versa. And and actually, we're finding this gap within education as well that we've spoke about multiple times. And you know, there's a need for engineers, new engineers, and we yeah. need to support as people within industry support the next generation. Yeah. So it makes sense for Engineers Insight to be that stepping stone. Yeah, definitely. Um, so my next question is actually about the next generation of engineers, and it's. It's more of a scenario and I'm going to take your best bits and use them when I'm in front of classrooms. <laughs> so I want you to imagine you're stood in a classroom facing the next generation of our industry. What advice would you give them prior to joining? God, kids are even harder than like to be. <laughs> it's like trying to get engagement from young people. Is a, It's hard, but it's great that you're getting in, involved in doing that. But I would probably say, like, just be open to trying different things. I don't think there's a standard career path like there probably was in the past because stuff's changing so quickly now. So I think, yeah, being open to learning and and pivoting wherever it makes sense, that where you can learn something new and be curious and, yeah, just, just wanting to keep learning. Like, you know, it's not, again, anymore that you finish a degree and, oh, all right, that's it now. I'm fully up to speed with things because actually yeah the way the technology is moving you're you're never going to keep up if but, you just stop so and think yeah i've ticked all these boxes it's yeah it's about continuously learning and this is a starting point and if you've got the passion the hard work and you ask the right people for help then you can do whatever you want yeah i think you definitely touched on a couple of things there that is already in my powerpoints that i'm yeah, yeah. That I'm creating for these people is that curiosity is huge yeah and i actually looking back on my apprenticeship, I wish I asked more questions. Yeah. Because you don't, you feel like you don't want to ask someone. You don't want to annoy anyone. You don't want to or, annoy yeah. anyone. 
and then you just muddle your way through the coursework um, or your apprenticeship, get signed off, and then you're in the real world and yeah, yeah. you're expected to know the answer to them question. Like, didn't you learn this on your apprenticeship? <laughs> like, yeah. Ah. yeah. So um, what do you believe are the most crucial skills then for these people? Oh, you know, there's a certain level of, of technological skills that you'll need, I guess, you know, as, but you can learn all of those. I think it, it's about working with people. It's about understanding, you know, your emotional intelligence and being able to read different situations. Uh, cause you know, we're all working with, with people at the yeah. end of the day. And if you're going to get on in any business, you need to be able to have good social skills. You need to be able to give feedback, which is really important for both positively and, and constructive feedback. So I think, yeah, working on those, working on your emotional intelligence, reading the room, you know, reading situations and, you know, sort of figuring out, recognizing that everybody's different and people need different approaches to get the best out of people. So yeah, I think if you can try and master that those skills, uh, you'll, you know, the rest of it you can, you can learn as, as well. Um, it's almost like qualifiers, but I think those are what set you above everybody else if you can engage well with people. Yeah, 100% agree. Yeah. Looking back on my career, it's always been about a network of people um, who you can lean on, who you can ask questions, yeah. of, who you can support in return. Yeah, yeah. Because it's always... It's all relationships, Yeah, it's isn't always it? the and, relationship. Yeah. 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 Um, Absolutely. So the next section is more about your experience in leadership and how you can pass that knowledge on. So as a business leader, what sort of principles do you follow when you're building a team or managing a team to for that team to be successful under you? I try and be, I always remember, so a guy called Dave Lewis in, in Lincoln, um, he was one of my managers then. I always remember him saying to me, fair and consistent, like you've got to be fair and consistent um, with all of your team because, you know, that's, that's one of the key things that people get upset about or, you know, you can demotivate people really quickly if you're not treating everyone fairly. Um, so that's totally stuck with me. Um, I think it's, it's, it's getting people in the team that have got the right attitudes again, you know, that they're willing to put the effort in, they're willing to put the work in, they come in with a positive attitude. They, you know, we don't all have the answers. Like I, I don't have the answers at all, but, um, together you know if we we can all work together then you want people that can work well as part of a team that are willing to engage that come with potential solutions not just problems all the time um come with a positive attitude um there's a quote i really love it's t totally cheese but i love it um if you change the way you look at things the things you look at change and that's i think if you come in with a positive if, if, like i came into this this you know chat and thought this is going to be crap. I, go, I can't bear to stand 20 minutes talking to Tom. Then it's Which probably, I know you did. It's probably, yeah, it's probably not going to go so well. Uh, you know, I'll be disengaged. I'll think, oh my God, when's this going to end? Whereas if I come into it thinking, this is going to be fantastic. You know, I've got an opportunity to speak to someone who runs his own business. Mm. Like how fantastic is that for a good 20 minutes, half an hour, we can have a great conversation. Then yeah, it's probably going to go a bit better than, than if I'd done it the other way around. So yeah, I really like that. If you, yeah, change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And I totally can't remember who said it now. We're going to have to Google it <laughs> <Yeah>. later. <laughs> but I like the quote. <laughs> you know? Maybe that's the caption for the video. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how do you inspire the people around you as that team leader? Um, I think doing the right things, being positive, um, you know, showing that, you know, that we, we can find a way forward if we've got challenges. Like this challenge with the audio. <laughs> good save. Yeah, good save. <laughs> no, yeah, I think like, I mean, ho hopefully walking the talk in terms of behaviours um, and trying to be as positive as I can be, even though there'll be challenges in whatever, you know, business you work in and, you know, whatever situation, there will always be a challenge at some point. I think, again, it comes back to how you approach it and um, go in with a positive attitude and, yeah, hopefully then yep. <laughs> that resonates with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah, any manager I've had who's had that positive push down almost onto the rest of the team. Yeah. It 
lifts you up to go and do your day job. I mean, we're at work most of the time yeah. for most of our lives, aren't we? Yeah. It's like you want to have fun and you want to, you know, enjoy working with the people that that you're in the team with. And yeah, if everyone comes in like mood hoovering every day, you'd be like, oh, sweet Lord, like this is going to be a long day. <laughs> <laughs> we spoke earlier about some of your mentors, particularly when you're at Alstom. Do you still have mentors today? Um, yes, I do. Well, I, my most recent mentor um, was a gentleman called Manfred Kirschberger, uh, and he leads a part of the factory network for our process automation. Um, but So he has been a fantastic mentor for me whilst I was in the manufacturing. I don't have a mentor at the moment. Okay. Um, I, I, I am in the process of, uh, <laughs> of trying to get one because I, I totally think it's valuable. So if someone's yeah. got, I think as well, it's about taking ownership of who you want to mentor you so you know if, if you see someone where you think oh actually I could really you know they could really help me in terms of getting advice from them and um go and ask them you know yeah. the worst they can do is they'll say no and then you'll be like oh, okay can you recommend anyone else is yeah. there, you know and get that you're too busy or, or whatever but yeah there's almost a little bit of a stigma about mentorship not necessarily offering mentorship but the other way around going to someone asking, asking. yeah yeah I've always you know, I, I, I listen to every entrepreneurship um, podcast and read yeah. the books and it's always about finding a mentor that can you know, bring you along that journey. Yeah. And I've always struggled finding it. And then actually it's been natural progressions of I've actually got a mentor that used to be a customer of mine who's a CEO of a business that we uh, still yeah. have regular ch chats yeah. on the phone or a coffee shop and it's more of how I'm running the business or how I'm supporting others. But I, I always, I was always conscious of where the hell do you find one? Where, yeah, yeah. Do you go out to a network of high net worth individuals and and ask people? But actually, it's been people that have been in the industry with me, yeah, or been in there longer, and they're just willing to help you. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, thinking about the next generation of engineers who are desperate for mentorship. You know, we're offering that we go and do talks you know, with the brands like yourselves. Which and, is brilliant. Yeah, and offer that sort of mentorship, but it's quite hard at scale. Mm. You know, mentorship works when it's one-on-one, -on -one, having a chat like this. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose, what what would you suggest that those young engineers do to get a mentor? I mean, if there's people that, that you're connecting with on platforms like LinkedIn yeah. that you're engaging with, I wouldn't go like cold calling someone, like, you know, straight in, like obviously try and engage with them first. And, um, you know, if you're posting things, tag different people that you'd want input in, you know, use that as a lever then to maybe start, you know, mess with them, ask if, you, you know, you can actually have a chat with them. Um, that's one way. Um, if you've worked, I mean, different companies have mentorship schemes. Anyway, I know like in Siemens that we've got mentorship schemes, um, different universities definitely do. So if people are in university, a lot of the universities, like we worked with the University of Lancashire, um, well, Lancaster, and um, other program called Productivity Through People, where we had, I was an industrial mentor for, you know, for different SMEs or and different S engineers. So, um, I, I wouldn't be afraid to ask when you find somebody you think like, oh yeah, you know, like they'd be a good person then, yeah. then, then just ask them yeah. um, or ask people, you know, in your, in your own family network that, you know, there's lots of people work for different companies that, that might be able to think like, oh, actually, okay, you're looking at that. Like, you know, they might be able to recommend somebody, um, tutors at college, the colleges yeah. tend to have good connections with industry uh, that they'd be able to. To, to point them in the right direction or have contacts themselves for somebody. Um, but I get it. It's not always easy, is it? It's yeah. not. No. No, and I think it probably is more of a natural thing that you just yeah. come across someone that, that wants to It's not always hard. like that you're going to stay with that same person. No. It, you know, because at different times, you're going to develop, learn, and yep. you're going to move on to different areas that you feel you need support on. So, yep. yeah, it's always changing as well, isn't it? Like, yep. Yeah. So that's not quite the end of the questions. <laughs> But the next two are a, like a, tech. a little bit more That's open. Tech. Yeah, go on. So um, I want to know if you feel like you're successful. If so, why? Yes. <laughs> well, hey, I think success is if you're happy. Um, and am I happy? I am. I If you'd asked me a year ago when I'd just moved jobs, I'd have probably been like, oh, my God. But having gone through that, you know, first six months and... I've learned so much. I'm still learning so much. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm so glad that I made that change um, into the role that I'm in at the moment, moving from manufacturing. Um, so yeah, I think it's just like, are, are you happy? Are you happy doing what you're doing? Then, you know, ultimately, yeah, that's success for me because it's sort of, yeah. It's a great answer. Yeah, because anyone could be in any job, couldn't they? And yeah. as long as you're happy doing yeah, it and definitely. you might be becoming a technical expert within the same role, does yeah. so that make you happy? Great. Brilliant. Crack on. It's your life. So yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, that's, but yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> It's a great answer. And I've got, so I've taken this, the last closing question I've taken from one of my favorite podcasts. Um, it's called How I Build This. And the question is, do you attribute your success to luck or to hard work? Can I say both? No. no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course you can. As long as you, as long as you explain why. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's hard work in terms of one, obviously, I think there's, there's a sort of entry requirement that you've got to put a certain amount of effort in. You've got to be good at your job. Um, I think it's about developing relationships with people to, you know, that, that will help you um, and offer you suggestions, offer you mentorship, coaching um, to where you, what you should do differently or what you should do next, give you feedback um, that, that helps you move then into to new roles. Um, and I think by developing those relationships, people will either say, oh, have you thought about doing that? Or, you know, and that then maybe leads away into doing something different. Um, or you just do a really good job in the job that you're doing and people recognize, okay, there might be an opportunity for you to grow into this next role because you've done, you know, you, you're obviously doing well in, in what you are doing, but I think sometimes it's timing, like if I take, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff moves slowly, doesn't it, yeah. in lots of companies. So I think sometimes there's a mixture of, of definitely luck in terms of what point everything's at, have the stars yeah. aligned. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, even the change of jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so a little bit of luck. Yeah, a little bit of luck. A lot of hard work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably you got to don't, don't rely on luck. Yeah, okay. okay. you definitely got to put the work in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's all the questions, so you can relax. Hey. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate the time. I just want to use this closing 20 seconds just to say thank you. Thank you to the wider team at Siemens for supporting us, no for supporting Engineers Insight, for being on there, putting products on there. Um, yeah, and look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks for having me on.